I saw you at the Lodge Room in, uh, I guess, in 2018. 2018. Was that, it was my bass player's birthday? Possibly. It was uh, the Lodge Room. I think it was June. I think, 2000. 2000, I think, I think 2018. Was, I'm pretty sure it was in June. It was, what, probably June 1st. Definitely before, like, a baby came out, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was like, I was listening to the show. Um, I had just met my girlfriend at the time. We went to the show. And I heard all these songs. I was like, oh, my God, all these new songs are so, so good. Like, was there a feeling around like a baby like you knew that oh maybe this album's kind of different like just just by writing maybe in the writing process or the touring process of like i think this record's gonna be special uh i don't know i mean i hope all of them are special totally. I, I think i just like um you know it was the first one for stone's throw which is was cool um but i don't know i mean you know they're all every record is its own journey yeah like a full you know totally so i don't know i just remember yeah at least yeah, i for, wish well, i could answer that question better <laughs> i think that's a thing for fans to kind of think about you know because i saw you and i was like oh this record's yeah. <laughs> gonna be insane like but when you're in the the motions of it it's all the same you know well um, it's like it's all crazy <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> did you record that one yourself uh no that one i recorded in toronto with um Maddie Tavares from Bad Bad Not Good, mm. formerly of Bad Bad Not Good. Um, we recorded in the Bad Bad studio there, and um, it was mostly me and Maddie mm. doing the recording. There were a few other people who came in and helped. Um, this drummer, Evan Cartwright, uh, also from Toronto, played on that record. Cool. He also played on the new record. Um, and um this person con uh yeah uh, there were uh, you know a few people like coming in and out and and doing things um but generally it was me and maddie how many uh, and i think i read somewhere you spent nine days making it no that was uh toon time oh toon time, two time was in nine days that, i think that was 14 days something yeah maybe it was 12 days I, it was like we did one three day no no one five days stint and then one nine day stint that was mm. it like yeah. in may or something i went for five days and then in uh september or august i went for nine and we just like banged it out i think there's um, like no a... this one took a couple weeks mm. took, took a couple weeks of like recording and then i did a, some recording at home and mm. mixing at home there's like a Steve Albini quote. I don't normally quote Steve Albini, but I will right now. <laughs> but he says like, if a record takes longer than 10 days to make, you're doing something wrong. Obviously that's like in a punk mentality. Like, I'm, I'm like <laughs> but like, I always yeah, thought, of, I always general. thought about that. Yeah. Is that like, I don't know. And then I, I read that quote that you worked in that album. I was like, Oh, maybe he likes doing records in 10 days. Like I've recorded records in 10 days and it fucking well, what's sucks. The, I mean, how do you <laughs> also like, how do you really define doing it in, like working on record like what like just yeah. the recording process or the yeah. mixing too like what are you talking mm. about there <laughs> yeah I, I don't know i guess i'd have to ask steve albini but i'm assuming he yeah means, <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming he means tracking that's my just guess. tracking yeah. yeah i think you could track in sense. 10 days it's gonna be like kind of stressful but i think you could yeah i mean you yeah. have to have everything planned out i feel like i don't know the the record abracadabra the more the recent new one, one yes um that one was more like studio experimentation just because i was recording it in the stone Throw studio which is mm. close to my house i had like a little more it was a little more like leeway in time yeah i could spend like trying things out and playing with different studio techniques um which was super fun just That's like awesome. you know having access to things that i yeah never had access to before so yeah <laughs> i was able to just like play around try to make a hi-fi record totally fun is that studio that's the studio that's in highland park yeah oh yeah i used to walk by there. I, I used to live on 53rd and uh monta vista right next to that oh nice that place that has the good sandwiches they yeah. uh, uh i used to walk by stone's throw a lot just like cool. try to peek in and then someone's looking at me like why are you looking in here <laughs> i was like i'm just trying to i'm just trying to get a peek but that's <laughs> such a cool um that's such a cool label like that like for 
for like oh years it seemed like it was just a hip-hop label but with like you los retros and uh uh mild high club it feels like they're branching out and i don't know yeah i mean they've been they've always done their own thing yeah i feel and it sounds like they kind of give you the freedom to do whatever you want yeah definitely that's really no um they don't they don't have any like uh i don't know input on the records which is cool that's so cool yeah what else could you what else could you ask for i guess yeah yeah (laughs) um i asked the internet for some questions and 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 somebody asked uh they wanted to know how the collaboration with wise blood came together um i've known natalie for years um and yeah i mean i knew her in new york uh, when we both lived there and then, um, I think we both moved to LA around the same time. And, Hmm. um, I was just like, I don't know. I was trying to record a version of like a baby in my basement and just like doing as much as I could. And I was just texted her and was like, Hey, do you want to sing on this? And she came over and did it. It turned out totally good. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. 